Hey guys, how are you going? Welcome to the Positive Experience Podcast, where we look at the good, the bad, and the ugly in living your best life. Today's segment is called In the Trenches, where we look behind the scenes at what's happening in the clinic. Hey guys, welcome to the Positive Experience. Today, I've got my good mate, Avi. How are you, mate? Hey, you lucky. That's the way. We are at the time of recording, it's the 8th of July, and tonight, midnight, is uh, Metropolitan Victoria about to jump back into stage three lockdown. So, not fun times ahead. Um, so, I am going to transition over to and point you guys towards a blog post that Arby's put together. Um, it's just been recently re- released. So, just check out the links to this podcast and it will take you right there. Um, basically, Arby's put together an awesome piece on shoulder pressing um, and managing pain if you're doing this movement. So maybe to begin with, Arby, what, what do you mean by shoulder press and what do, what's the difference between a press and a row? Um, so this blog post pretty much goes through, because I get a lot of people coming in into the clinic and see people at the gym that always complain of, pain while the press so what's what do I mean by a press it's usually could be like a bench press that way or pressing up so it's pushing away from the body and whereas a row or a pulling movement is usually pulling towards your body with a heavy load awesome. so so that's a, yes. a very functional movement there you could be at work in in the warehouse pushing and pulling things away you might be in the gym pushing and pulling things away you might be a mum pushing and pulling the kids away. So this blog post can help anyone across that whole health spectrum. Is that right? Yeah, definitely. Um, so all these tips doesn't really ca- doesn't just only cater for, cater for people that lift heavy loads at the gym. It's for anyone because throughout most of our most most of the day we do a lot of heavy lift. Uh, we do a lot of push pulling and pressing, like you mentioned. And then so that's why you can just incorporate these tips into your everyday life and see how much of a difference it can make. Okay, awesome. So not to give too much away from the blog post, let's go through the five tips that you've put together. So number one, you've got activate. How would you yeah. summarize activation work? Um, so as you probably know, um, with everything I do, there's always activation in every part kind of activity. So pretty much why do we activate? Because we want to get the right muscles firing, to get the to do the correct job for the thing so it allows efficiency that's probably the main key factor to be efficient with what you do and that happens through activating because before you do your movement you get the right muscles on you're going to have a lot more efficient way to do the thing so that's probably the activation so i got i think in the blog post i go through the shoulder big three and I got a link onto that one, the blog post as well. So you can check that out and definitely incorporate that and see how much of a difference it makes. And I learned that from the great Andrew Locke um, and I've been using it ever since and it's had great results. So I definitely give that a shot. Perfect. Thanks for that. So tip number one, activate or activation work. Tip number two is technique. Tell us a yep. bit about that. Uh, so technique, I didn't want to go too much into detail in the blog post with the technique because um, it, Ideally, what, what are the main take-home message? You have to earn your way to go up in weight if you lift in the gym scene. But if you're everyday, you just need to make sure you have the right ways you uh, get stuff off the clothesline, uh, off from the top shelf. Because if you continually do it the wrong way, it's just going to cause more issues and you're going to be in more pain. And later down the track, you won't, your shoulder's just going to be too bung or you can't even do overhead activity. So best thing is to really listen to your body. So when pain is like a signal to tell you back off, something's not right and um, get that checked out. So yeah, technique is probably a really um, hitting point. So with the pressing for the gym aspect, I don't really go in detail with the bench press. It's more the overhead shoulder press kind of stuff. So the movement up like that. Um, Always recommend, make sure you get that looked out before you go up in weight. Make sure your form's 100% spot on and then go up. Perfect. So with technique, I think the key there to summarize is if you're going to do something, you might as well do it properly. Yeah, definitely. Cool. Number three, you've got here positioning of your shoulder blades. What do you mean by that? All right. Um, So this is probably um, a big one because most of the time uh, we normally, in most cases, 
whenever we try and reach, we tend to elevate. So we really shrug up to try and get that extra, extra movement, especially if we're trying to get something from the top shelf. And I see it at the gym all the time, trying to get that extra couple of millimeters to shrug, but that, that um, increases the impingement in your shoulder and really um, decreases the activation or the work of your big latissimus dorsi muscle. So our big wing muscles down here, because they're, they're part of the core and they're like a massive driving factor. Cause if you're nice and tight there and they're on, you're going to get, you're going to have a lot more force compared to um, using your more, your upper traps, which sort of are the opposite of um, lats. And then, so what I mean by the actual position, it's pretty much easy way to think of it, your shoulder blades into your back pocket. So it's pretty much back and locking them down or think about squeezing a hundred dollar bill between, between your armpits and you don't want to let that go. And that really engages your lats. Yeah. Don't want to lose those hundred dollar bills. That's for sure. <laughs> Cool, mate. So number four, you've got dumbbell or barbell. What does that yeah. mean? So, so that one's more so in the gym scene. Um, so ideally, especially when you're starting out um, and you're trying to still get used to the positioning of your shoulder blades and work out what works for you and which way is the, which way is the best way to activate the lats and all that kind of stuff, um, I would highly encourage to start off with the dumbbells because you have a lot more control. And... Um, yeah, so yeah. So a lot, a lot yeah, so a lot more control. So when you bring in with your dumbbells, I recommend going into more like a 45 degrees instead of full 90 degrees out here. So bringing your elbows a little bit more. That way it's easier to lock your shoulder blades back and down. And then when you're pressing, it comes up. And then when you come down, you're sort of doing the lat pull down, down. So really using the lats. And that way you're not really jamming up the space between in your shoulder joint so the ball and socket's not really jammed up like that it sort of gives you that bit more freedom to move in so that's probably a big one because as you get more into it and you know and your lats are more engaged your back muscles are a lot stronger then i'd recommend going into a barbell because barbell it's harder to get into that position and you don't have that much range to move around where to position your hands gotcha so it's like you're picking the the tools that will help you get stronger and perform movement better so just like before, technique is a big part of it. But if your technique's not spot on, then you'll be found out if you're lifting too heavy or if the equipment you're using is beyond your, your ability. Is that a good way to think about it? Yeah, definitely. Um, it's pretty much my spot on there because I think everything comes back to technique and just making sure everything's down pat because big thing that I learned from Sebastian and like those guys, um, they, they – point out techniques, everything. It doesn't matter if you're like, can lift um, like whatever big heavy loads, they always start you on the bar because you got to see where it sort of starts to break down and it could be breaking down right from the start and that's why it's easier to fix because the the goal is to be in the game for a long time, not for a short time because you can lift heavy heavy loads in with incorrect form for like a couple of months, couple of years, but then it all starts to break down and I think that's where technique really comes into. Cool. All right, the suspense is building. And the last and final one, the fifth tip is controlling your tempo. Yeah, so this is pretty, um, this is good in a lot of ways. Um, for, for this uh, blog post, it's more really trying to slow it down and it sort of can give you an idea of where you feel like you're breaking down. Because especially when you rush things, um, you go out of form, you lose the position of your shoulder blades and you're sort of just pumping them out. And it's actually has more time under tension for the muscles. So, which is really great for muscle building because um, more time under tension means the muscles have to work harder and it creates, um, especially because of with COVID restrictions coming up, uh, lockdown um, and you got lighter loads, you can't lift as heavy, more tempo work would be uh, more beneficial than you just trying to pump out higher reps. Because the more you're trying to descend the control, really find out and then come up nice and controlled puts a lot more tension on those muscles. And I think that's really good, great for muscle building. And I think a lot of research suggests that as well. Yep, perfect. I think that's a good little um, little asterisk there or a little caveat because um, people who will be training at home, you can do a lot of these things um, pretty well with what you have because if you're controlling the speed or the tempo, you're using what you have around at home with, with um, equipment. So maybe dumbbell or barbell. You don't have anything like that. Um, you know, you might think about using um, whatever's around the house. Like fill up your backpack with some some items there, and then you can sort of try and do modified presses there. Um, 
I'm sure you guys will come up with some, some nifty ideas. Um, but then you can reuse this time when we're all looking to hibernate to sharpen up on your technique and then looking at using um, your tempo to, to challenge the muscles there so you can get the results that you're after. So, mate, thanks a lot for pointing out the benefits of um, avoiding shoulder pain while you're pressing um, with your five tips here. Um, I think something that we could probably plug quickly to help people understand um, where they might be going wrong is something called a bat test. Could you tell us a bit about a bat test, Arby? Um, so that's pretty, actually a great test. Um, highly recommend coming in, especially during this COVID period, before the gyms open back up, because um, at least, because like you mentioned, gives us the ability to work on what sort of week. So what is a bat test? It's pretty much a body assessment tool. It's an athletic screening tool that we have um, introduced. It's usually, it's taken from like the elite level AFL players, um, soccer players. They all use this kind of testing to sort of, they do it pre, so pre-season, in-season and end-season to sort of see where they're sort of lacking, what muscles need to be worked on and to sort of prevent injuries or any anything on coming further. So we start with pretty much a quick test, goes for an hour and we start from the head, go all the way down to the toes and um, assess pretty much everything and then we give you a report. It's a nice, nice report with three recommendations that you can give to your trainer or you can work on yourself, especially during this lockdown. To make sure that's down pat, then when you go into the gym in six weeks' time or whenever the lockdown um, ends, you're, you're back 100% and you know what to sort of work on and what we're sort of lack, lacking. Awesome, mate. Great plug there. So jump online, www.prophysioplus.com.au. When you make a booking, just look for the BAT test and it explains a little bit on what it is. And um, like I said, it goes for an hour and we put you under the microscope and we find out your top three problems and give you uh, your top three solutions plus the programming. We give you the exercises to help you, you know, avoid things like developing shoulder pain before it actually comes on and gives you an injury. Now, the last thing you want is to be injured. Okay, so um, check out that blog post. Check out our bat test. We're going to sign off our blog post today. I hope you enjoyed the positive experience. And as always, we're making up be simple. Stay safe, guys. See you again soon. Yeah.